Yo, this is Chuck, and welcome to the How to Defeat Dudes video blog. Now, a little while ago, I made a video blog about all the things that go into finding a good martial arts school. Things like the style of the instructor, the proximity from your house, the environment of the school. All those things are really important in deciding what kind of a martial arts school you really want to train in and in finding one that actually suits you and suits your needs. Aside from all those other factors, though, there is one huge thing that's going to determine whether or not you're going to actually enjoy the training at the school that you choose. And that majorly important factor is whether or not you can find flow. Now, according to this homeboy, whose name I ain't even going to try and mess with, flow is a state of being completely immersed in an experience that we feel is rewarding in and of itself. And if this makes sense, one in which we feel as though we're one with the experience. In short, it's where your awareness merges with physical action. For the hard thinkers out there, now I know this might sound like some like crazy, funky, new age, kind of hippie stuff, but actually flow is a very, very tangible thing. And if you've ever experienced it, if you've ever been immersed in flow, damn, it is amazing. I think everyone can kind of relate to the experience of being so immersed in like a good book or in doing something that you don't even hear it when someone calls your name. Or you know, if you're just out with the homies and you're playing football, you're playing basketball or something, and then as soon as you stop and take a break, you look down and then you notice that you're bleeding and you're like, when in the hell did that happen? Or when you're snowboarding and like you get off the lift and then all of a sudden without even noticing it, you're just at the bottom of the hill or the bottom of the mountain. And you don't even really remember the subjective experience of, of doing that last run, but damn, it was a good one. Or especially as a ring fighter, you know, when you're just so into the fight that everything you're doing is just all dorsal stream responses and then it just end up being the best fight you've ever had. All of those kinds of experiences are simply expressions of flow. Basically, when athletes talk about being in the zone, what they're really referring to is the state of being in flow, where you don't just have kind of peak performance, but you're having this amazing peak experience as well. Now, after watching my long, super drawn out explanation, you're probably sitting at home thinking to yourself, Chuck... Now, how is it that I can find me some flow? And I'm sure you're thinking it in those exact words, too. Well, my dear friends at home, let us explore this question as to how it is that I, me and Chuck Johnson, can help you find your flow. So first, if you don't mind too terribly, I'm going to get all technical on y'all and break out a chart. Bam! So as you can see from the chart, flow exists as a vector between task difficulty and skill level. Now, what all of this technocratical mumbo-jumbo means is that, in effect, flow comes about as a function of balance. Basically, what it comes down to is this. If what you're doing is too difficult, you get frustrated and you can't focus. If, on the other hand, what you're doing is too easy, then you get bored and you still can't focus. So, basically, you find flow when the task that you're confronted with is just difficult that if you perfectly focus, then you can achieve your goal. But if you don't focus, then you're going to screw it up and then you're not going to make it happen. Now, what that means for all of you lovely people? is that if you're at a martial arts school and you're feeling frustrated all the time, then what you're doing is probably too hard for you. And in one way or another, you need to find a way to train in a way that's easier. That might mean going to easier classes or just like racking up time in the beginner's classes or just talking to the instructor and just letting them know that you need to slow the pace a little bit to make sure you can really get it. Then on the other hand, if you're like, ay ay ay, why are we doing this technique again? We did it last week, we did it the week before that, we did it the week before that, I just don't want to do this anymore. Then it means most likely that it's much too easy for you and you need a greater challenge. Now what that also means for martial arts instructors is that we need to be very cognizant of where exactly our students are. You know, if somebody is really, really frustrated, if someone is really bored, or even when they're perfectly in flow, you can see all of that in people's faces. So even as you're training yourself or even as you're just teaching, you need to be keeping an eye on people's faces to see where exactly they're at. Oftentimes, the things that we as instructors think are the perfect level for our students may or may not be. So you need to be communicating directly, and then every once in a while getting up in people's faces and being like, dog, what's the skinny? You really enjoying this? Now what this also means for both instructors and students alike is that you can't always follow this old adage of no pain, no gain. Because, according to the concept of flow, people progress the most when they enjoy what they're doing. Now me, personalistically, I love challenge. I live to challenge myself. And if I didn't, then I sure as hell wouldn't have gotten into the international film industry because it's like the hardest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> to try and become successful in. But I love it. I love the challenge of it every single day, and I love having to fight to get myself somewhere. You know, I love pushing myself, but at the same time, I don't necessarily like being pushed by others. And that's one of the things that makes me kind of a difficult student for other martial arts instructors. That and the fact that I'm just late all the time. <laughs> but anyway, 
The point that I'm making is that a good instructor will see that, will realize that, and be like, you know what, that's just how Chuck rolls. And he'll just let me kind of go my way and do my thing. And as a function of that, he will see me continue to train, and he'll eventually see me blossom as a student. Now, to give you guys an experience from my own life, you know, when I was about 16 or 17, six days after I got my black belt, I won the Michigan State Junior Olympic Championships for sparring forms and breaking. I swept the division, all gold medals. So then I'm thinking like, sweet, all right, I'm gonna go to nationals. But then my instructor at the time was like, you know what, aside from this one tournament that you just won, <laughs> you know, you have no local or state level experience fighting as a black belt and you need to get some low level experience before you move on to something that big. Now that's perfectly logical thinking, but what ended up happening with me is that as far as I was concerned, I'd already won the most important tournament in the state. So for anything state or local level, I kind of just didn't care. You know what I mean? Like I only wanted to move up. So when I would fight in local and state level after that, I would just kind of get bored, you know? And as a function of that, my performance would be lackluster. And then I'd be getting seconds and thirds all the time. So then when I'd approach him again, and be like, I want to go to nationals. Then he'd be like, well, I still don't think you're ready because you're still only getting seconds and thirds. And we end up getting in this kind of loop thing. Now, what I really needed was simply to go to nationals and get my ass kicked. And I did. Again and again and again. Until eventually I won one or two. And that was enough. So anyways, guys, the point that I'm making is that in your heart, you know what your level is. Or maybe you don't know, and you just need to find out. But the only way to do that is through trial and error. If you're frustrated with your training and you feel like it's too hard for you, then it is too hard. Or, you know, on the opposite side of the spectrum, if you're bored because you feel like it's way too easy, then the fact of the matter is, it is too easy. It's really that simple. So that means you either need to find some place that offers you either a greater challenge or less of a challenge. Or if your instructor is a flexible guy or lady, then you need to talk to them and then let them know how you're feeling, what your frustrations are. So hopefully through that, you'll be able to find what exactly your flow vector is. And then once you have that, then you're going to really truly enjoy your training. You're going to stick with it and you're going to get damn good at it. So anyway, this is all that I have to say about the topic. I probably said too much already. It's probably going to be another like 10 minute video. I'm really trying to get these back around five minutes because I know 10, 10 or 12 minutes is a little bit long. And I'm sorry about that. But I hope with this video, you'll know what it is that you need to be able to find flow and to really enjoy your training. And through enjoying it, you'll be able to stick with it. Sticking with it is the only way to be good at it. Much like languages, martial arts, or fighting systems take, you know, thousands of hours of practice and repetition to be able to do it proficiently and to have it when you need it. I hope you don't find that daunting, though. Anyway, this is Chuck. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to stop here. Um, and new videos, of course, are always on the way. Looking forward to cranking out all kinds of new stuff later on, okay? Thanks for watching, and see you next time. Yosha!